Hello everyone, I'm Reverend Alan and I'm Reverend Jane and welcome to our school Harvest Festival service. As we couldn't all get together in church this year, we thought we'd join you in your class bubbles using this video service. So shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you that as we meet in Jesus' name, you are here with us. Amen. So we're going to light our candle now and we light this candle to, to remember, remember that, that Jesus, Jesus, the, the light, light of, of the world, world is, is here. here. So what is a harvest festival? Well, it's simply a time for thanking God for everything that he's given us, especially thanking him for our food. I'm going to put up some pictures now of different fruit and vegetables that God has given us. And I'm going to put them up one at a time. And you have a few seconds to guess what they are before the answer comes up. Now, this is one of the few times in class when you can shout out the answer. So see how many you can get right. Red pepper. Carrot. Honeydew melon. Bunch of black grapes. Stalk of broccoli. Aubergine. I wonder how many you got right. You know, God didn't just give us one or two types of fruit and vegetables to eat, but he gave us many, many different varieties to enjoy with different flavours and colours. It's the same with everything else we eat. God has given us so much variety. When someone gives us a gift, it's normal to say thank you, isn't it? Saying thank you for his food is something that James is learning to do. Hello, James. I have been looking forward to seeing you today. Your dinner is ready. I hope that you are hungry. I'm starving, Grandad. What's for dinner? Your favourite sprouts cauliflower and broccoli casserole. Oh, how kind of you, Grandad. But actually, I've got a bit of a stomach ache, so perhaps I'll pass on dinner. What if I were joking about the sprouts and it was really chicken and chips followed by chocolate fudge cake, would your stomach cope with that? Oh, Grandad, you're the Best, yes, please. How about you saying grace, James? What's grace, Grandad? I thought grace was a girl's name. Grace is when you say a thank you prayer to the person who has provided us with the food that we are about to eat. Thank you, Grandad, for this lovely food. Come on, James. Be serious for a moment. OK. Thank you, Lidl, so much for my dinner, especially for the chocolate fudge cake. You make them really well. Oh, and by the way, please could you make the chips a bit thinner because I prefer them that way. And... Hold on, hold on, James. I think you're a bit confused. Who do you think provides all your food for you? Little, of course, Grandad. I go shopping with my mum there every week and we buy all the food together. I put all the things that I want in the trolley when mum's not looking. So when we get to the checkout, mum does have some surprises. I'm sure she does, James. I think you and I need to do some thinking about this. Let's start with your choice of chips. Did you know that chips are sliced up potatoes? Oh, yes, Grandad. And where do potatoes grow? That's an easy question. I know that potatoes grow in the ground. And what do they need to grow? Soil, 
Sun, rain. And who provides all of those? God. Oh, Grandad. So God is really the one who's provided my chips. Thank you, God. I like chips. Now, what about your chicken? We learnt at school the other day that chickens come out of eggs and hens lay eggs. So I suppose we thank the hens for the chickens. Thank you, Mrs Hen. No, who made the hens? God made the hens. Oh, I'm starting to understand, Grandad. God is the one who gives us our food. Thank you, God. I like chicken. But what about my chocolate fudge cake, Grandad? Next thing you'll be saying is that chocolate grows on trees. Well, as a matter of fact, chocolate does grow on trees, as cocoa beans in very hot countries. Wow! Thank you, God, for chocolate trees. I like chocolate. So do I, James. Isn't God good? He is the one who gives us all the things that we need. And he has even given you a grander to cook your tea. Would you like to say grace now? Yes, Grandad. Dear God, thank you very much for my tea of chicken and chips and chocolate fudge cake. Thank you also for giving me a grandad to cook my tea. And please, God, could you breathe on my tea now and heat it up? Because while we've been talking, I think it's gone rather cold. Amen. So when you have your next meal, why don't you at the beginning say thank you to Father God for the food that he's so generously provided? We're going to have a song now. It's a special harvest song. And because we can't sing as normal, we've chosen one that you can dance to. So if you'd like to stand up where you are and see who can do the best samba as you dance on the spot.
OK, time to sit down again now. Did you enjoy the dancing? Sure you were better at it than I was. At harvest time, not only is it a time to say thank you to Father God for our food, but it's also a time to share what we have with people who don't have enough to eat. There are many people around the world who don't have enough food to eat. And Father God has provided enough for everyone. But you know, humans haven't been very good at sharing. And we can easily forget that Father God is the one who's given us everything and that he wants us to share what we have with others. Now, there are organisations that help share food in countries where there's very little to eat. But there are also people in our own town who don't have enough food to eat. And so eight years ago, churches created Rugby Food Bank, which is a great way to share food with people in our own town. And Rugby Food Bank collects food in special baskets at every supermarket, as well as here at St Matthew and St Oswald's Church. And this food is then delivered to people who need it. Jesus said that whenever we feed someone who's hungry, we're actually doing it for him. So let's see how good we can get at sharing. So this harvest time, thank Father God for your food. It's a gift. Think about how you can share it with others who have less than you. If you have pocket money, maybe you could do something simple like buy a bag of pasta or a tin of beans and put it in the basket for the rugby food bank that are on the exits of our supermarkets. Or maybe you could bake some cakes and sell them and send the money to a charity that helps people who have less than you do. Let's think about that as you look at some pictures now and you hear some words from the Bible. It's Psalm 104. O Lord my God, how great you are. From the sky you send rain on the hills and the earth is filled with your blessings. You make grass grow for the cattle and plants for us to use so that we can grow our crops and produce wine to make us happy, olive oil to make us cheerful and bread to give us strength. Lord, you have made so many things. How wisely you made them all. The earth is filled with your creatures. All of them depend on you to give them food when they need it. You give it to them and they eat it. You provide food and they are satisfied. I will sing to the Lord all my life. As long as I live, I will sing praises to my God. Amen. So let's end with a prayer. If you'd like to close your eyes and think about your favourite food. Thank you, Father, for all the food you have given us. We're sorry where we've not shared what we have properly. Help us to share better with people who have less than us. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And may God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So that's it. That's the end of our harvest festival. But don't let it be the end of saying thank you to Father God. Remember to do that next time you eat. Bye bye. Bye bye.